Welcome to episode three of module seven, infectious disease. We're still continuing on with inquiry question one, how are diseases transmitted? Our syllabus reference for today, we will look at the work of both Robert Koch and Louis Pasteur to explain the causes and transmission of infectious disease, including Koch's postulates and Pasteur's experiments on microbial contamination. Our learning intentions for today's video, we will describe the contribution of Louis Pasteur to our understanding of infectious disease and describe the contribution of Robert Koch to our understanding of infectious disease. So let's first look at the infamous Louis Pasteur. Louis Pasteur was a French scientist renowned for his groundbreaking contributions to microbiology and immunology during the 19th century. This includes disproving spontaneous generation and proposing the germ theory of disease through his famous swan neck flask experiment. He investigated the process of fermentation, demonstrating microorganisms, yeast, are responsible for the conversion of sugars into alcohol in the absence of oxygen. He developed the process of pasteurization, which involves heating liquids to kill microorganisms, a method widely used in the production of cheese, milk, and wine. Pasteur's work on vaccination is one of his most significant contributions. He developed vaccines for several diseases, including the rabies vaccine, chicken cholera, and anthrax. His experiments involved weakening the violence of microorganisms and creating vaccines that could stimulate the immune system without causing severe illness. This laid the groundwork for modern immunization practices. Louis Pasteur conducted several influential experiments that contributed to our understanding of microbiology and disease. One of his most famous experiments involved disproving the idea of spontaneous generation, which suggested that living organisms could arise from non-living matter. Pasteur designed a special flask with a long S-shaped neck. The design allowed air to enter the flask, but prevented dust and microorganisms from reaching the nutrient broth inside. His experiment involved filling the flask with a nutrient broth a liquid that supports the growth of microorganisms. He then boiled the broth to sterilize it, killing any existing microorganisms. After sterilizing the broth, Pasteur left the flask exposed to the air. The unique design of a swan-necked flask prevented airborne microorganisms from reaching the nutrient broth, even though air could still get into the flask. Over time, Pasteur observed that no microbial growth occurred in the nutrient broth inside the flask. The absence of microorganisms in the sterile broth indicated that the microorganisms did not spontaneously generate, but were introduced from the external environment. He concluded that microorganisms did not spontaneously appear in the sterilized broth as long as they were prevented from entering the flask from the outside air. His experiment provided strong evidence against the theory of spontaneous generation and supported the idea that microorganisms come from other living organisms or pre-existing microorganisms. The significance of his experiment had practical applications, such as the development of aseptic techniques and the importance of sterilization in preventing contamination in laboratories and medical settings. Now let's move into looking at the work of Robert Koch. Robert Koch, a German physician and microbiologist, made significant contributions to the field of microbiology and laid the groundwork for modern bacteriology. He developed a set of criteria known as Koch's postulates that has helped establish the relationship between specific microorganisms and a particular disease. His experiments and the use of his postures led to the specific type of bacteria that causes anthrax, tuberculosis and cholera. You can thank Robert Koch for the development of agar plates. When conducting his experiments, he needed a culture medium that would provide a more stable and practical environment for growing bacteria in pure culture. This innovation facilitated the isolation and study of individual bacterial colonies making it easier to identify a specific pathogen and its disease. During his discoveries, he needed to ensure that he could obtain pure cultures of the bacteria and adopted 
a range of aseptic techniques such as an inoculating loop sterilization, disinfecting benches, the use of PPE such as gloves, masks and safety glasses, and the technique of 45 degree agar plate opening that are all still used today to help create pure cultures. His contributions to the field of microbiology has laid the foundations for medical research development and developing public health practices. And in 1905, he won the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for his work in identifying the causative agent of tuberculosis. As mentioned, Robert Koch developed a set of criteria that assisted him in finding the relationship between a specific microorganism and a particular disease. This is known as Koch's postulates, and there are four criteria. The first, the microorganism must be present in every case of the disease. This means that the specific microorganism, bacterium, virus, etc., associated with a particular disease should be consistently found in individuals who have the disease and absent in those who do not. The second criteria states that the microorganism must be isolated from the diseased host and grown in pure culture. The isolated microorganism should be able to grow in a laboratory setting away from the host tissue. This step is crucial for characterizing the microorganism and studying its properties. The third criteria, the culture microorganism should cause disease when introduced into a healthy, susceptible host. The isolated microorganism, when introduced into a healthy host, usually an experimental animal, should be capable of reproducing the symptoms and characteristics of the original disease. And the fourth criteria, the same microorganism must be re-isolated from the experimentally infected host. Following the induction of disease in the healthy host, the same microorganism should be, be re-isolated from the host. This re-isolation confirms that the symptoms and the disease were caused by the introduced microorganism. And that is the end of episode three. Thank you for watching.